Algebra 2, concept 7c. In this concept, we're going to graph quadratic functions in what's called intercept form. So it is the third form of quadratic equations. So intercept form looks like this. It is a quadratic in the form y equals a times x minus p times x minus q. So a is the same, and it'll still do the same. You can tell by a if the parabola is going to reflect or if it's going to be a stretch or a compress, P and Q are different. These values indicate our x-intercepts, so where the parabola will cross the x-axis if it does. So x-intercepts are the points P0, because they're right on the x-axis, and Q0. So P and Q are obviously constants, they're numbers. So here are the steps to graph a quadratic if it's in intercept form. <clears throat> so again, you want to look and anticipate any transformations, and you can only focus on the a value to know if it opens up or down and if it is a stretch or a compress. You're going to start by finding those x-intercepts, so p and q. p and q are going to be the values right from the equation, and it's what's being subtracted, so it's going to be opposite sign of what you see. Those are the first two points that you can graph. But before you graph, you're going to find you graph that you're going to find the axis of symmetry by finding the middle of p and q. So you're going to add up p and q and divide it by two. Then you're going to find the vertex um, by taking the value that you just got for the axis of symmetry, p plus q divided by two, and plugging it into the equation. So let's try one. So example one, we've got one-fourth times x minus six times x minus two. So notice how this quadratic, it has two x's, so therefore that would be x to the second power, but it's written a little differently. So we can pick out those p and q values. It's gonna be opposite from the sign that you see. So p, the first value we see is positive six and q is positive two. We can write those in as um, x-intercepts, so it is 6, 0, and 2, 0, because those would be points right on the x-axis. Now we're going to find the vertex, the x-value of it, by adding them up and dividing by 2. So that gives us 4. And then the y-value of the vertex by plugging that x-value in. So y will equal negative 1. So we have the vertex for negative 1. Now, I always forget, that's also our axis of symmetry, where x is 4. I always forget in this form that those are the three points that we can use to graph. So here I didn't forget. I put my two x-intercepts, 6, 0, and 2, 0, and then my vertex right in the middle, because that point will be in the middle on my table. And now I'm going to graph it. Sometimes these points are close together, and so the u-shape is very easy um, to draw. You're always going to draw a nice smooth u-shaped curve for the parabola, nothing pointy. And this one you can see it opens up our a value, positive one-fourth, um, and it's wider than the parent function. Domain is going to be all real numbers and then our y value of the, sorry, our range will be that y value of the vertex at so negative one. So all the values that are greater than negative 1 equal to as well. And since it opens up, that's a minimum. So let's look at another one. Let's anticipate with that negative 2. So we'll have a reflection, and it'll be narrow. Let's pick out our p and q values. So we have positive 1 and negative 3 because we're taking opposite signs. And then we're writing them as points right on the x-axis, so 1, 0, negative 3, 0. We're going to find the vertex by adding up 1 and negative 3 and dividing it by 2, and then plug that number into our equation to find the y value of the vertex, which is 8. So our vertex is the point negative 1, 8. And here, I accidentally put in values in the negative and positive direction, and then I remember, oh yeah, I can just use those intercept values around the vertex. So now I'm going to plot those. <clears throat> you can see that a points, those points are far apart, but I still make a, make a nice smooth U-shaped curve through the vertex. Sketch in your axis of symmetry. There it is identify your domain and range. So it's all real numbers, 
and then our range is y is going to be less than or equal to positive 8 because see how the graph is opening downward. Now is the independent practice time. So use the method that you just learned to graph it and then come back and check your work. All right, in number one, you should have picked out these P and Q values and then found the X and Y of the vertex. And our vertex is going to be at the point 3 and negative 8. Anticipate that this graph is going to open up and it's going to be narrower than the parent. And remember, oh, I did not remember. Maybe I do here. Yes, I do. That all you need to use is the vertex and the two intercepts to graph this. Now these points are far apart, but draw it as a smooth U-shaped curve. Okay, it's not a pointy graph. Your domain is going to be all real numbers, and it opens up, so it's Y is greater than or equal to, and that should have a little negative there, negative 8. Oh, there it is. And it's a minimum since it's opening up. All right, check your second one. Now, this is one that you'll want to listen. So notice that the X was, first X was not in a parentheses, but we could put it in a parentheses. Because you think, well, where's the P value between P and Q? Well, if there's nothing next to the X, we could technically put in a zero. So that means our P value is zero and our Q value is positive six. So now we can see those intercepts at zero, zero. This problem is important because there is one like it on your unit exam for this graphing quadratics unit. <clears throat> All right, your vertex is at 3, 9. Axis of symmetry is at 3. You've got your three points. You only need three in intercept form to graph. And it's going to open downward because notice how that um, value in front of the equation, the x value, is negative. Domain is all real numbers, and then the range is y is less than or equal to 9 because it is opening downward, and we've got a maximum. So once again, this is an important problem. Remember that even if you have an equation like this and don't start out with two parentheses, you could just draw in that second set, and then you'll be able to clearly see your intercept values.